Are you frustrated with grading and balancing the footage that comes a bit out of your Olympus and OM system cameras? Is the footage falling apart? Or perhaps the skin tones are looking more like a scene from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Well then stick around because I'm going to show you an easy way to color correct your OM log footage and make it pop. So one of the most requested video topics is how to grade the OM log footage. So I thought I would take you all through my process and how I work with this footage in Resolve 17. Now I am using the studio version of Resolve, so some of these features won't be available to you if you have the free version, like noise reduction, grain, glow, etc. But really, they aren't totally necessary in getting your footage to look nice. So rather than take you through like a full color grade tutorial, I thought I'd show you how to correctly color correct and balance your footage and then make it pop. Because I really think that this is what the majority of people out there will be struggling with the most. And really, most clients are looking for editors or colorists that can make the footage look natural and pop from the screen. So please note that I definitely do not regard myself as a professional colorist by any means. I do, however, spend a lot of time learning from professional colorists and experimenting with my own footage to learn and refine my skills, but I am still learning myself. So the methods I'll show you are kind of aimed at beginners and it's just one of the many ways you can go about balancing your OM log footage. I'll also demonstrate this on the 8-bit footage, uh, 4K footage that comes from the cameras like the EM1 Mark II, III, EM1X, uh, and as well as the H.265 10-bit footage that's in the new OM1. Oh, and I'm sure there's some of you out there that are gonna ask what kind of computer I'm using. So I've got a top spec 14 inch uh, M1X and it deals with almost all the footage and heavy grading with ease. Still for the methods I think I'll show you today, uh, you shouldn't be, it shouldn't be too taxing on your computer. But if you do own a slow computer, you might find some of the H.265 footage. Uh, it's a bit slow on your computer, so I recommend converting it to ProRes 422 beforehand. I am also grading on a uh, BenQ 32 inch uh, color calibrated 4K monitor, so it's an expensive monitor, and I'm working in Rec. 709 color space within the monitor. So some of the things that I will be editing um, will look different on my monitor than what you'll see because your screen is probably not color calibrated, but we'll go through some uh, tips and tricks on using scopes to, uh, to balance things um, when you don't have a color calibrated monitor. So before we begin, just a quick rundown on the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit footage. So basically 8-bit footage has 16 million colors to work with, whereas 10-bit has about 1.07 billion colors. So that's 64 times more colors than 8-bit, so it's pretty significant. And then you've got like 12-bit, uh, like my Blackmagic can shoot, and it's like 68 billion colors. So huge amount of uh, color um, spectrum to work with. So what that means for us is when we're, we're super limited in how far we can push and pull our colors in 8-bit footage before it starts to break apart and start to look like crap. It also means pulling keys for skin tones gets tricky as we're often selecting like a, a, a one color for skin, but it actually is multiple colors in that selection. Um, so it's incredibly important to get everything right in camera first. So that means exposing correctly for the scene and ensuring your white balance is near spot on before pressing record. So I won't get into this now, but if you're keen on me doing a video showing you how to do this, uh, drop a comment below and I might uh, do that one next. Another thing to note is then when, when we adjust exposure of the footage, um, like the shadows, mids and highs, it has nothing to do with like the 8-bit or 10-bit um, color, color range we get out of the camera. That has more to do with the dynamic range of the sensor and the camera as a whole. Okay, so now we're in Resolve in, in the color tab. So if you don't know how to get there, um, just click on this icon down here. That's the edit tab and this is the color tab. And you can see here that I've actually got um, a little variety of uh, footage. So we've got some uh, H.265 10-bit clips here. Um, which you'll have seen from my uh, BTS and review of the OM1, which I'll leave a link up in the description if you haven't seen that one already. Uh, and then I've got some uh, H.264 footage from uh, EM1 Mark II and EM1 Mark III, I believe. Or maybe EM1 Mark II. Anyway, they're all pretty much the same in, in that regard. Um, 
I'm not going to be doing a whole, whole big explanation on how to use Resolve or anything. I'm assuming if you're here, you're already using it or um, you've got the free version and you, uh, you're willing to have a bit of a uh, play around. So there are a few things we're going to do before we actually get into the grading and we're going to set, set up Resolve so it's much easier for us to um, interpret what we need to do and what changes we need to make uh, to our footage. And we're going to use Resolve to kind of help us along the way so there's less that we have to do uh, to get it into a, a beautiful looking image. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to turn on our scopes and you can see here I've got um, the RGB parade. Uh, I assume you can see it down here. Um, so first thing if you ca can't see that one we're going to come over here um, well it will be down here and we're going to press this one and it's going to pop up with these. So as you can see here I've got four. Uh, if yours comes to one just make it into four so we've got our RGB parade, which helps us kind of see where color imbalances are in our in our footage and, and get rid of some color casts if they're there. We've got our Luma waveform here, which can help us figure out exposure, but also um, some of our color issues. We've got our vector scope here, then that's going to show us. Um, it's, it's, it's very 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 handy for our, our skin tones, um, which you'll see. Um, soon when we put that up as well and our histogram which you should be familiar with if you're uh, shooting with histogram or use Lightroom it has the histogram there. So you can see our highlights and our shadows and midtones here along the range. So with these set up um, as a four here what you do need to do is come over here and make sure it might be down quite low just bring it up until it's not so like all white but just a bit below so we can see it a bit better. Uh, same with our waveform here, just bring it up, see how it's overly white there, we don't want that, we still want to see a bit of the colour here, so just bring it down a little bit. With our vector scope we need to make sure we turn on turn on the two times zoom and this is a very important show skin tone indicator and again don't want it too dull but you don't want it overly bright, uh, just about there I think. And that's good and then we can actually move that around and um, but I'll leave that here and I'll move it around during the video um, if we need to. So now that that is set up, we also want to click on these three little dots here and we're going to turn on this display qualifier focus. And what that means is when we come over here and we turn on our qualifier, whenever I hover over a part of the image, see here, it's actually going to have a look down on our scopes. You're actually going to see exactly that part and where it sits um, within those different scopes. And that's super important, especially with skin and and getting rid of um, and like getting our whites to be purely white, we can see what actual color there is um, becoming too dominant, and we can start to pull that back. So it's a handy little uh, handy little tip there for Resolve 17. It's not in Resolve 16 or before that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to come up to our file and we're going to go to Project Settings. So in Project Settings, uh, I want you to go down to Color Management. And you'll see here color science. So normally, uh, in versions before Resolve 17, it'd be DaVinci, YRGB, and then our timeline, which we're working in, is going to be Rec 709. But what we want to do, especially to help us out here because we're beginners, is we're going to go to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. And now we're going to click on Automatic Color Management. Color processing, standard dynamic range. We're just working in standard footage. There's no HDR here and our output color space is standard, Rec. 709, okay? So what this is going to do is going to funnel all of our log footage in, it's going to interpret it and, and give us um, a bit more of a, a, a better starting base for when we start editing. So what you'll see here is I'll move this over here, I'll just click save. So if we go to a clip like, say this one here, uh, where you can see how skin, there's nothing being applied to it so far, and we're in the color managed um, workspace. So if I go down to project settings again, and if I put this back to the standard before anything, click save. Did you see that in the color of the skin? It's gone really dull, it's a lot flatter, it's a bit more green. So it means that we're gonna have to do a lot more editing to pull that back if we're working in just the regular um, unmanaged um, modes. So if we go back to here, go back to our color managed and 
automatics on SDR, SDR Direct 709. Let's move this over. Just have a look at her skin again here when I press save. See how it just gave some more warmth back to it? And we haven't even done any editing. So Resolve has already boosted up a little bit closer for what we need uh, when we start to edit. So it's a handy little thing. Just mind you, it's not going to work on our uh, standard H.264. It's just working on our 10-bit footage here. Not sure why. Uh, I'm not super technical in all of this stuff, but uh, we'll go over and grade that uh, manually anyway. Okay. So let's start with here. What we're going to do uh, for anyone who hasn't uh, been in Resolve before uh, and has maybe color graded or something in something like Premiere or Final Cut, Resolve is like the pinnacle of color grading and editing. It's just so powerful. It's so it's so visual. It just everything just works how it should be, and it, it's so easy to go back and try and find or edit something, um, make little tweaks to a certain component of the color grading workflow and be able to find it easy. It's not just in one clip. So what we've got is nodes and nodes are not too, well, they, they are a bit scary to start with. But as you can see here, what we're going to do, we're going to have a very simple eight node structure. And you might think, Jesus, eight, that's so many. But what we've done here is let's have a look. Our first node that we've got here, we're going to do in our noise reduction. So any time, all we're going to put on here is noise reduction, nothing else. Then we'll work with our exposure. Okay, so getting our highlights, mids and shadows correct. Then our primaries, that's going to be fixing any color cast, getting our color looking as natural as possible. The next node will be pop, is making, adjust our contrast and make everything kind of pop off the screen. The next one will be LUT. Uh, this is where we, if we do use the OM log LUT, uh, we would apply it here. Then we work on our skin, so fixing our skin tones, and then we might put a vignette on and then add some sharpening. So it's pretty straightforward when you look at it this way because now we know, okay, we might have edited, finished everything and we go back, oh, hold on, I want to bring the shadows up a bit. Well, I'm not going to do that in skin. I won't do it in vignette. Definitely going to go back to exposure and then make the adjustments there. Okay, so now that we have our eight node tree, we're going to, just quickly, I'm going to show you, if we press this number here, it's going to turn it on and off. So when I toggle between things, we'll have a look. Um, you'll be able to do this yourself as well and you'll be able to see the difference. So that's all we're going to have a look at there. Sorry, my baby's also crying. So if you can hear her in the background, that's what it is. All right, so let's work on this one. So it's a bit of a hero shot. We'll have a scrub through. It's the H.265 4K 10 bit. You can see we had beautiful, nice light. Lisa's looking lovely and a beautiful rainbow. So what we want to do is we want to find a hero frame that we can reference off. And that one looks pretty good about there. Uh, so what we'll do in this one, we're not going to, well, actually let's have a look and see what the LUT does. So we can see here, our skin tones, which is Lisa, is sitting pretty much perfect on the skin tone indicator. So, well done, Resolve. You've made that nice and uh, you've interpreted that footage lovely and well done to OM System for rendering skin tones nicely there. So if we go to our LUT and we go here, go to our LUTs and let's have a look at our, my favorites in here and double click OM Log LUT. So if you look here, look what happened to the skin tones. Whew, she looks like an Oompa Loompa. It's brought everything up. Let's just chug this back and forth. It's made everything look quite nice, but it's really over-exaggerated her skin. And we can see here on the indicator here, it's sitting a bit more to the red side, on the red side. We want it pretty much on there. So let's not use the LUT for this one. Um, and let's just go through and grade it ourselves. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to go to our pop. And we're going to make sure we're in our custom curves here and we're selected on this one. Okay, so click on this and we're gonna to go to editable splines. So what we do here is we click on that one, we bring it up a bit slowly and just, it's all about doing little adjustments, nothing huge and over the top because that's not what we're after here. Lots of little adjustments, tweaking to make our final look. So. It's gonna bring it up a little bit. And there for our highlights, click on our bottom one, our shadows. 
bring it down a little bit. Okay, this is our pop. We can adjust it again later. So we can see here it's just giving it a bit more contrast here, bringing, mixing everything in nice, nice, um, and evenly. So let's have a look at our parade here. Here we can see what are the dominant kind of colors. So this is our highlights and this is our shadows or our blacks. We can see here this red peak is higher than our green and it's higher than our blue. So there's a more dominant red and that would be because Lisa's skin is so warm here. We can see here it's quite high. And we have greens is here as well. And there's a, this is more blues in here. But that's, that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix our exposure. Okay, we've done our pop, we're going to do exposure. So we're going to go back to this one here, which is our primaries. Okay, so this is our color wheels. We're not in our log wheels, uh, HDR log wheels or whatever. We're in our primaries. So what we want to do here is, is our lift, is our shadows. We can adjust our shadows here. Our gamma is our midtones, which is traditionally where our skin sits. And then we've got our gain, which is our highlights. And so we can adjust the exposure of all of those by using these little sliders here. And we can adjust our offset. Now offset is just global, it's like our master. And in the master, if we adjust anything here, it's going to adjust everything, which we're not really going to look at here today. So we can see the image is a bit flat. We've got a white dress, but it's a bit dull. Um, our sky could be in the clouds here. I mean, the light was reflecting off here. So we want to work in our highlights. We can see here on our parade that we've got a bit of room here um, to work and push our highlights. So let's bring this slider here up. Now, if we brought it all the way up, obviously we've blown it. See, if you can see here, we're going over that line. Anything above that line is clipped. We don't want that. And that being said, well, you don't always have to go to the very extent into the tops and then bring our shadows all the way down the bottom. It's just a general rule. You look at professional colorists who do big professional ads, they will crush things, okay? They'll blow things out on purpose, okay? It all depends on the scene that you, you are editing. So for us, though, we want to bring them up a bit here, maybe to about this. Looks kind of nice. And then bring our shadows down a tiny bit. If we bring them too dark, we can see what happens there. Our blues are starting to get crushed there, but let's bring it down a little bit. That's fine. And our midtones, bring it to about here. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Brought it from exposure to here. So it's looking a bit more natural how I actually interpreted the scene. Don't worry about selective parts. Uh, we're talking about just the whole general scene. Okay, so let's look at our primaries now. So the color in here, it's actually looking quite good. Um, there's probably not a huge amount that I would do. There is a slight, we could probably uh, warm up Lisa a tiny bit. So we know that our, actually we'll leave that one, I think. Um, it's actually looking pretty good. There's no actual color cast. There might be a slight blue tinge in the shadows, but that's all right. So what we do is we can drag this around. See how we adjust the shadows and we can see the shadows down here. Whatever's higher in our shadows is more dominant. And we see I'll put too much blue in there. So we rotate it around, we can see. So if we want to when we're trying to balance our footage here, we're trying to make it look as natural as possible. So it's probably actually not too bad. Bring it up a tiny bit to the warmth. Not too much. It's pretty good. You'll see in some of our other shots here, um, it's going to be a bit more noticeable. So turn our primaries on and off. It's hardly noticeable whatsoever. So exposure on and off very much noticeable. Okay, so let's look at our skin. Now we can actually isolate our skin because if instead of doing like a big general kind of grade on everything and affect every color that's the same color as Lisa's skin or near enough to it, we can actually isolate that. So we're going to go over to our skin, obviously. And so we're going to click on our, this one here is our qualifier. 
So it's like a little eyedropper. Pretend that when we click on her, she's, it's going to be taking like a little piece of that color exactly where I've clicked and it's going to interpret it down here on our hue, saturation and luminance. Okay, so looks confusing I know, but just think about this. I'm going to click on her skin one, maybe there and on her neck and her, on her arm. See how these are moving around? It's now showing us that where I clicked, it's grabbing that little piece of uh, her skin sits about there on the hue spectrum. It's about this saturated and it's about this bright. Okay, and these just mean the range between the highlights, shadows, the range of saturation, and we can move those in and out. But obviously it's very difficult to see. So come up here and click this little magic wand. And what that does is, boom, just shows exactly what we have clicked on. So move this down here. So what we can do here is just start having a play around. So if I open this range up, it's allowing more colors in, which we don't want. We just want to isolate her skin. So I'll zoom in here a bit for you. Okay, so saturation, let's see if we open that saturation up. We can move that around. Obviously you don't want her dress, but we want to get as much of her skin as possible without introducing everything else. So luminance again, so our brightness of our skin. And we want to target about there, I think it looks pretty good. So as you can see, there's not much on the outside, which is perfect. So what we also want to do when we ever we work with skin is add a bit of denoise. It just takes a bit of that artifacts away and smooths everything out. So maybe, as you can see here on the gray on her top, see how it's smoothing out a bit? Let's bring it up to about there, about 10. And then our blur radius is all about the edge. See how it's a bit sharp at the moment? So if I crank that up, it's smoothing it out. And when we smooth it out, it's going to look a lot more natural. All right. So now that we've got our perfect key in, uh, we've qualified our skin, we've isolated everything we want to work on, we can now look down here on our vector scope. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at our skin. So we can see here that her skin's looking pretty good. It's on the line here, but see how it's starting to skew on the side here? That means that it's leaning towards yellow. So we know that we want to get our skin tone line on that line or as close to as possible. So let's have a think. How can we move from yellow to red? Well, let's go back here. Let's have a look. We know, as I said before, that generally our skin tones lie in our mid-tones. And our mid-tones here, our middle one is our gamma. So if we look at this range here, we can have a look. So here's our yellow, here's our red, magenta, blue, green, yellow, blah, blah, blah. Look at this circle, look at this circle. It goes all the way around in our colors. So if we move this dot, anywhere I move this dot goes to that color, okay? If the further I push it, the more extreme the saturation is. So if we bring it back to zero, it's fine. Have a look at our skin tone curve. If I start to move it this way, towards our red magenta and we can pretty much smack it right on that line there and then bring back some saturation by bringing it back towards the middle all right now it's hard to see here but when we go back to here turn that off zoom back out so let's have a look here when i turn skin off on it's very very subtle and you may not even see it with this youtube compression but it's taking some of that yellowish green tinge and bringing some warmth back in. And now her skin is literally perfect on that line. Now, if you're using a computer, uh, a screen that isn't color calibrated and you don't use these scopes and you just use it from your eye, chances are you 19% of the time you're going to get it wrong. Even if it looks good on your screen, then you put it on, uh, view it on a TV or view it on someone else's screen, upload to YouTube, whatever it may be drastically wrong. She could look green, she could look orange, um, a pretty bad tinge. So that's why we use our scopes and our vector scope particularly to isolate our skin and to make it look perfect. I know there's all of these new things to learn, 
but watch this tutorial a few times, pause it, have a go um, with your own footage. Remember this 10-bit footage, we can pull skin this way. I'm gonna show you how to do it differently on 8-bit footage, um, but with the new OM1's 10-bit footage, this is how we can pull the skin. Okay, so here, that looks nice. Now, we've got our skin done, our pop done, our primaries, which we didn't have to do much of. I just warmed it up a tiny bit, our exposure. It's looking pretty good. We've only a little bit of blues are crushing the shadows, but who cares? Uh, don't I don't care here. Um, the highlights looking right. We can probably bring the highlights up a tiny bit. Bring some of that color brightness back in, yeah. Up and then bring our mid-tones back a tiny bit. It's looking good, our skins. Skin for most people should sit around 640 IRE, okay? And if we look at here, it's sitting, yeah, I could say the mid, middle, middle range is sitting around 640, but anyway, it's looking pretty good to my eye. So now we might want to put a vignette so to vignette, just to isolate her, bring our eye onto, to, onto Lisa because a lot of this foliage here is a bit distracting and the rainbow is perfectly lined up on her. So we want our eye to go towards her. So we go down here to this one. It's our power windows. So it's a window here. Basically what a power window is, is we draw a window varying of different shapes around something and we affect either what's inside or on the outside. And with a vignette, we want to tunnel in on our subject. So let's click on our circle. So let's move this around. We drag our middle one in here a bit, make it a bit bigger. And now we want it really, really soft. So if we drag this one here, we can actually, this is like a feather if you used to it in Lightroom and it softens the graduation, okay? It's soft there, make it a little bit bigger. Now what we want to do here is at the moment, this window is set to edit anything that's inside that. We want to affect the outside because it's a vignette. So what we do here is press this button here and that inverts it. From there, there's multiple ways we can now darken the outside, but I like to just go into our primaries and then just grab this exposure and see if we can go extreme but we don't want to go too extreme. So probably about there, maybe soften it up a tiny bit more. And let's have a look here. So vignette off on. And now that just brings our eye to Lisa a bit more. Now, sometimes when the subject is moving, we might want to track it. Now this won't happen all the time, but we're going to in this one. Click on tracker. So what it's going to do is whatever's inside our circle here, which is Lisa, or sorry, inside our box, it's going to track and try and stay with it. So we press this little button here and it's going to track forward. Which does a pretty good job and then tracks back the other way. And you can see here these little uh, uh, crosses, it's showing you what it's tracking. So now, see how it's pretty much staying with her and keeping our vignette on there. This is one of the magic of Resolve, it is just so powerful. Okay, so sharpening, we're not going to apply any sharpening A because I think the Olympus foot and OM footage is overly sharp anyway. Uh, and noise reduction, it doesn't really need any, uh, not that I can see here anyway. So we can actually just leave those on and off. I'll show you one other scene later um, where we have uh, noise that we need to get rid of. So that looks pretty good. Let's start from the start on that one. So this is our log footage. We started with our pop, bring it up a tiny bit, exposure, primaries, brought our skin back, added our vignette, and there's no sharpening. And that looks pretty good. It might be a little too punchy, but I I like that. I reckon that looks beautiful. Look here. 
Obviously, Lisa has beautiful skin to work with. All right, so on to our next one, which was kind of kind of the same here. Um, we're working with skin again in that light, but maybe we'll go to... Oh, we'll do this one quickly. Okay, so we go command option S, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can make this into a power window, which I might show you actually. So what we can do, if we've got scenes that are pretty much um, the same as each other, we can do two things. So this scene is pretty much the same light. What we can do is we click on this one. If this doesn't show up as well, you can make sure your clips are selected. And then we right click and apply grade. And that's going to copy everything that we had in that node tree onto this one. And we can see here it's a bit too bright now. So what we can do here is go back. See this little red dot here? This tells you that when you're in this node that you have changed something in there. So we know that exposure and we're working in our primaries color wheels. So let's bring down actual the whole exposure so we can do as an offset because that's our master. You can see it's a bit too much. So to there. Bring our highlights down a tad. I like our shadows a bit darker. And it turns to about there. Okay, so let's have a look at our skin. So we click on our skin. And remember to show what's happening just on our picker. So see, it looks pretty good actually. And our skin tones sitting pretty much on that line but they are a bit too saturated so what we can do here is we can either pull this back towards center or we can just click on the saturation here and bring it down a bit and you can see on that skin tone line that it's coming down and we can just bring it back to a bit more normal so let's take that off so now we're not actually affecting the color of it we're just taking some of that saturation out and you can see that's sort of so it looks a bit more natural. And then we actually don't have to edit too much more on something like this. You might have to fix a vignette um, because we're able to actually just copy and paste our, um, our grade over to similar images. Now you might be saying, okay, well, we move to this one here and things are different. It's a different kind of light, but I don't want to go through and make all of these again. Well, what we can do here is we can make a power grade. So what we do is I'll just reset all of these. And what a power grade is, is we can use this node tree and we can make it into a power grade. So then when we go to this um, clip or whatever clip it is, I'll just put the power grade on and we've automatically got our node tree ready. So it's super super quick going through an entire sequence and just putting your node tree in and then you just use the ones that you want so let's go to here so what you have to do is we come up to gallery and in power grade and then so if we right click on this and grab still and now it's just grab. i know it's the picture of her but it doesn't really matter it's using the node tree that we have made so if we've actually put any um make any changes in these and we make it in the power grade that will also copy over so we want a blank blank canvas basically uh, so when we go to our clip here let me just delete all of those sets it back to stand let's have a look at the clip it's a lovely one of her a bit underexposed but that's fine i like that moody outlook so we come up to our power grades which is in gallery and then we right click apply grade and now we've got this already ready for us so let's find a hero shot for us maybe here or oh, actually when she looks back it's here all right perfect so let's have a look here we've got our highlights some of our shadows it's a bit it's a bit flat because the light was flat we can see here we don't, haven't got much contrast because if we had contrast our highlights would be up here and our shadows are down here so let's go back through our what we're going to do. Let's go to our pop, back to our curves, uh, make sure editable splines is turned on. Click on here, bring it up a tiny bit, 
I might bring it up a little bit more this time. Not too much. With this 10-bit footage, we can push it further now, uh, especially with that new sensor. Uh, we'll be a little more precise, so when we use the 8-bit. Let's bring some of that down. And we can see, even though on my screen it looks quite dark, we know we're not crushing anything here. Even though I said it's fine to crush stuff. Um, what is our main subject here? Well, that's Lisa and, and all of this beautiful color here. This stuff, if we haven't got detail in the, the trees and the buildings, who cares? So if we crush that to pure to black, uh, doesn't matter because that is not what our eye is, uh, what we want our eye to be looking at anyway. So we'll leave it about there. Let's turn that on and off. Gives it a bit more pop. Okay, so now our exposure. Back into our primaries. Let's go with our highlights. So let's bring them all the way up. We can see we start to blow out our sky. Bring it back down a bit to maybe here. And then our shadows, bring back some contrast in. That's too dark, but let's find about here. Now this is, remember, all personal preference on how much contrast and look that you like. Um, and our mid-tones, the skin. We can bring her skin up a bit when we work on the skin as well. Let's talk about there. Bring our pinch our highlights down a bit. Bring our mids up. Okay, so let's have a look. Exposure. And that's looking a bit better. I won't spend a huge amount of time on there, but that's what it is there. Okay, so our primary. So that's our color, remember? Let's have a look here. What's happening on our scopes? So we can see here that our red in our highlights is dominant because we've got our, our sky, which was a beautiful fiery sunset. So naturally, our scene's going to have more red in it. Uh, and that's fine. We want to accentuate that. We can see here on our waveform that red is high, um, the blues are a bit lower. But in our shadows, our maybe there's a little bit of green um, that's a bit could be brought up, but that's fine. Our vector scope, a good way of uh, talking about white balance in a vector scope is the more centered we can put that on the cross, is generally having the closest we can get to for our. Um, white balance just as like a general rule so let's have a look here her skin sitting pretty it's pretty dark but it is quite on that line um, we can see here again our reds are pushed um, higher because of the light so what we might do is we won't tweak it too much but we want to accentuate that so we know in our sky that we had beautiful color and i know it actually had lots of color like this so i'm not i'm not um, worried about bringing that up a lot higher. So we've had to add some color contrast. We can, if we're boosting our reds up, uh, we can put some more blues back in the shadow and add some of that color contrast into the scene, even it out a little bit, but not too much. Maybe just one. Mid tones, I'll just leave for one moment. Bring that up a bit brighter. Maybe boost that a tiny bit warmer. Let's have a look here. So we've gone from that and added some, now we're not color grading, we're just color balancing, uh, color correcting. And, but we, because we're not going to be grading, I did add a bit more color to this one because that is actually how the scene did look. So I might just give it a bit more pop as well. Go back to the pop. Give it, click on the edit or spline here, bring that highlights oh, up a bit there. Back to our primaries, I'm gonna give it a bit more color and this time we're gonna use the saturation slider, ah, uh, sorry, uh, values. If we just click on this down here and just do a couple, bring it up a tiny bit. So now our reds are actually clipping. So I'm just bring that red, if we click on actual red just by itself down here, we can bring that down a tad and then bring a saturation back up. Okay, let's have a look at that. Looks pretty good.
Now, skin tones, because of she's um, quite tanned anyway, and the ambient light is quite red as well, it's going to be acting on her skin. So let's just have a look here at our skin. Let's go to our qualifier, click on our skin, 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 turn on just what we want to see. We can see here that it's starting to pick up some of the reds that are pretty much in the same color as her skin. So let's try and get those rid of those to there. We want to get her skin as close as possible. Saturation. Go to there. Luminance. Bring it down to here. Yep. Okay, so blur radius. I'm going through this quite quick. I would spend a bit more time on it if I uh, wasn't on this tutorial. <laughs> Pardon me. Tutorial. Blur radius. Denoise. That. Okay, so let's have a look. Her skin is, see how it's aiming up towards the red? It's really biased towards the red here. So let's try and um, change some of that. We'll try our first way is to use our gamma because that's our mid-tones. And we'll try and bring it a bit down more towards the green and sit that on the line. Looks pretty good. It doesn't have to go right on it. Okay, so let's turn that off. Let's have a look at our skin now. Gone from a deep magenta to a little bit green. It might be a bit too much. Let's go back to here. Back off on the green a bit. Just a tad. All right, that's looking good, I think. Perfect. Now let's have a look. There's not too much noise in this again, so we're not going to worry too much. Um, I probably won't vignette this because I like how the, the natural darkness is coming over anyway and it's kind of framing her uh, uh, along here with the light as well. So we'll leave that one as is. So let's just run through and have a look at what we've done here. So turn all of those off. Okay, so we started with our pop. And then we added our exposure and then we went to our primaries and then we fixed her skin. And then that's bring, brought us there to where we are here. Nice balanced uh, image with plenty of color and contrast and we're still looking quite nice within our scopes. All right, we'll probably move on now. So that was the 10-bit one. We have a lot more freedom in our 10-bit footage to edit how we like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to this shot here. All right, so let's get rid of all of these and delete. Yes, delete. Okay, so this was shot on the EM1 Mark II using the 12 to 100 uh, Pro F4. This uh, is my mate Matt. And you can see here it's quite hazy because... I was shooting with a quarter promist to soften things up. So we will have, there is going to be some contrast and, um, and sharpness um, lost in here, but that's fine. That's what I was going for um, to soften up the image because I find that it's overly sharp, especially on that lens uh, being an F4. So let's have a look at our scopes. We've got sitting quite nice in the middle. It's quite nice exposed. There's nothing overexposed. There's nothing under. Um, this was shot in log, uh, but this is the 8-bit footage now. So we're going to have to be a bit more careful because we know we have less colors to work with. And obviously this sensor is a bit different to the new OM-1. All right, so let's go to our power window. We can right-click, apply grade. We've got all of our um, components here already, our nodes. And what we're going to do with this one this time is we're going to use the LUT. Now, normally I wouldn't use the LUT, uh, especially on the 8-bit footage. I never used it because, especially on skin, because I just found that it ruined it. Uh, but here, when we don't have any skin and it's a, kind of like an outdoor environment with lots of rich color, we'll use it. So if you have, don't know where the LUT is, you can just go to the Olympus website and just download it. And it's called OMLog400 to BT709. That just means Rec709, which is the color space we're working in. So let's apply that first. Okay. Now you can see it's already brought up 
what we want quite nicely here. Uh, but it's still lacking a bit of oomph. Okay, so we've still got a bit of latitude to push it. It's still quite washed out. There's a bit of a bluish green co uh, color, con color tint to it. So let's go to our pop and to here, our custom curves, editable splines, turn on, click on that. We can bring it up and you see here, it's not actually going to clip, which is great. So let's bring it back to here a bit, maybe about there. Down in the same with our shadows. Bring it down a bit. So, say here. Okay, so let's have a look. Just adding that little bit of pop. All right, exposure. So again, we don't want to blow out any of this ice, not that there's any detail there anyway. Go back to our primaries. Let's just bring it up and just have a look. How do, what do we like? What is the main focus? Do we want, do we need to see lots of detail in the ice or do we need to um, preserve our shadows more? And I'm going to park it somewhere around there because I'm looking at the jacket and the bag. That's good there. Bring our shadows down. We don't need to see detail in his black pants because there is no detail there anyway. We want the focus to be on him and his jacket. We still need some contrast, probably around there. Now we're going to bring our mid-tones up a bit. No, we'll just park it to around there. Bring our highlights up a tiny bit and shadows down. All right. Again, we won't play around with it too much for the purpose of this one. So look at our exposure. We've fixed it a little bit. Uh, we know nothing's clipping. We've still got detail in everything. Probably add it to actually a bit more blacks. All right, good. All right, so onto our primaries. So we can look here. This this line here actually just represents his jacket. Okay, you can see that it's sitting on there. We don't have skin tones to worry about, so we can be a bit more. Um, we can we can change things a little bit more. So if you have a look here, the overall tint is sort of like a, uh, I don't know, an, a greenish kind of tint. That's in the highlights. Uh, we can see here the highlights, a bit difficult to see in this one, but the greens are slightly above the reds and the so are the blues. So in our highlights, we're going to grab this and instead of adding more green, we're going to add a bit more, go up towards magenta red. And you can see that instantly took that color cast out. So let's just quickly have a look there. Off, on. And see how we just straight away, we took out some of that, that um, horrible green color. So if we have a look at our shadows, we can still add a tiny bit of blue because I like the blue. Actually, no, I think it was just in the highlights. Let's add a tiny bit more, more towards the red. Okay, so let's have a look here. And you can see here on our scopes, when I turn on and off, we've just balanced those lines out a bit more. Obviously, there's a lot of blue here because the water's blue, um, but I just took out some of that tint that was over our rocks here. So that's the idea, doing little, little amounts to try and get our color back. Okay, so we don't have skin to work with, that's fine. Um, we do have, let's put a vignette on there because we want to focus on Matt. So click on our vignette, our power window, a circle, because that's what we are dealing with. Bring in around Matt, bring it up a bit, soften it up, invert it back to our primaries and then darken that in just a tad. And then we're focusing now on Matt. So let's have a look with and without, just adding that little bit of extra brightness to him. So I think it still could take a little bit more brightness there. All right, so the sharpening, we don't have to do anything to because I purposely softened it and there's no noise in this clip anyway because of how it was shot um, in the daylight. 
So that was a super quick way to balance our footage there. Let's turn all of this off and let's go back through the start. Okay, so we started with our LUT and got us to a decent way to space to go, but we can make it better. So then we popped it. We adjusted our exposure. We took out that color cast. We added a vignette. And there's our footage balance for that one. Okay, so the last one, or oh, probably the second last one is this footage here. This was shot on the EM1 Mark II uh, with my friend Naz. A video, I'll leave a link up in the description as well. Uh, this was for the release of the Surui 35mm anamorphic lens, which I absolutely love. So it's quite clean lens, but you can see it renders everything beautifully. I've already edited this one here, but we're going to go through and, and do the same as well. Um, all right, so let's delete all of those. Okay, so you can see here already. Let's have a look at our image. Find our hero shot. Let's make this bigger for you. We've got an overall green cast because why? Well, the, the light's starting to end um, at the end of the day. We've got green roof. We've got a yellowish um, court. It's all reflecting on her. Okay, so we can, if you saw here, we'd have some greens that are quite raised. And the yellows are quite raised. And we also see that it's a little bit overexposed. You can see on a hair. Remember, this is the EM1 Mark II 8-bit footage. Um, it's, and with that older sensor. So I actually probably overexposed it a little bit too much. So let's go to our gallery, find our node tree and apply our nodes. Okay, for this one, let's have a look what the LUT does. Let's go to LUTs. Okay, so it brings it up, but it's, it's, not, it's not the best. Okay, it looks a bit, it just doesn't look right. So let's get rid of that, reset that. We're gonna do it manually. So, First things first, let's go to our pop. Editable splines is on. Now we're gonna be gentle with this here because we're already overexposed a tiny bit. We're gonna just do a tiny little bit. And we might go back to this, Ooh, let's bring that back down. But we can definitely bring back some shadows there. Okay, we'll come back to that. Our exposure, let's have a look, we've got here we've got blown out highlights, we've got some light here, some light here, some light along here in the edge of her arm. We've already lost this detail, but what we can do is bring these highlights down. We can see here that it's, this is where it had clipped in when I shot it. If I bring that over, we can bring it, we've already clipped some of that detail, so we can go up to there, maybe a tiny bit higher. Bring our shadows down a bit. Bring some contrast back in. Brighten our mid-tones to about there. Shadows down a bit more. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's look at our exposure off. On. Remember, we, we're shooting into the light here, and so there's a bit of a haze coming across the, the, the lens too, which is going to affect contrast, So, but that was a creative choice. Okay, exposure's done. On to primaries. Now, let's have a look at what we've got with our primaries, sorry, with our color. We talked about the overall yellowish green um, tinge. So that's in our highlight. So let's have a look here. Yellow and green sit around here. So in order to get rid of some of that, we want to push to the opposite direction. So if we push into this direction, the magenta blues, let's go a lot too much and then bring it back. Slight amounts. Let's have a look here. It's already removed some of that, but it's a bit too much. So our shadows. Okay. 
some gray again. Tones clean up the white. All right, so let's have a look here. That's our green, and then we've just added, taken some of that green cast out. It's not perfect, but we'll fix up the skin now and uh, go from there. I might just bring back the exposure a ton, maybe darken it up, a, give some more contrast. All right, awesome. So let's go to our skin. So Naz again has got beautifully colored skin, which we can qualify. So let's click on that, that there. Remember, we go up to here to look at what we're dealing with. Okay, I'm going to just show you this and then see why we can't do this. It might be difficult if you just see, but can you see how the skin's kind of falling apart here? It's, it's, there's, there's patchiness and there's, it just looks bad, okay? And that is because we're working with the 8-bit footage. And when I'm trying to pull her skin here, because there's only a limited amount of colors, 16 million colors to work from, when I click here on her skin, it's also sampling other part, other colors that it thinks are there. Whereas with our 10 bit, it can really hone in on her exact color. So what we need to do is we're going to reset that. I'm going to show you a trick here that I learned from um, my color grading people, uh, Jake Pike. I'll show you his uh, link up here. He shows a great way of doing it. So we go up to click on our skin, go to color, presets, and six vector red. So what this does, it's only focusing on the reds um, in the image, which is around what our skin's going to be. It's going to leave the other things alone and, and kind of help smooth things out. I don't exactly know what it does, but it works far better than doing it without. So now we can go on to our skin. Let's click on our skin. And now, okay back to here and let's let's start to find our skin better again just how we were doing it before saturation luminance blur radius up again denoise okay so let's look at our skin again let's grab it over here and this time when we add Let's work with the offset actually. So it's a global, we're just working on our reds here. So bring back a little bit of the reds on that side. Not too much. Just a tad. Okay. Now if we look at a skin, see how it's much smoother. Still not perfect, but it's far better than it had all those splotchiness before. Okay, so if we just click off, we've got that green tinge on her skin, and now we've injected some color back in. But you'll also notice that it's doing it to other parts of the image that were the same color as, as her skin. So what you can do, this is a bit of an extra tip, you don't have to do this, is we make a power window around NAS, and we will only will tell Resolve to only do what we want. Uh, sorry, only affect what's inside there. So what could we use? Well, we're going to use the power window just like the vignette. So click on our window. Click on our circle here. Bring that around NAS. Make it a little bit bigger. Soften up a tiny bit. Okay, so now any this is only affecting what's inside the power window. See over here, have a look here, it was affected before, now it's doing nothing. It's only affecting what is inside that power window. Now obviously this, this is a moving clip, so we need to track it. So click on our tracker, back and forth. Perfect. So now we've got beautiful skin and it's only affected inside our clip. 
All right, so let's go through and have a look at everything that we just done. We could do put a vignette on there again, but for the purpose of this, we won't. Okay, so let's look. Here is our log footage. We added our pop. We added our exposure. We got rid of the green color cast. We fixed up her skin. And it's looking pretty good. And that's on our 8-bit footage. Okay, on to our last shot because I actually have to leave here very, very soon. Uh, we're going to delete all of those. This is Matt and I when we went uh, for a bit of a hike uh, off my little mini film of the M1 Mark II called Reset. I'll leave a link up there as well. Um, this is shot really, really late at night with a 17mm f1.2 on the M1 Mark II. You can see it's a beautiful shot actually. I didn't even know, I forgot I even took this shot. So let's go to our gallery, get our power grade and apply it. Close that. Okay, so this time let's have a look at what the LUT does. So let's go to our LUTs, double click. And it does a pretty good job here, I'd say. I mean, it's made his skin a bit more purple, or sorry, pinkish, but it adds, but that's what the color light was bouncing onto his skin. So let's just use it for, for this, um, this time. So it's trigger on, off, and you can see here our shadows now are a bit crushed, which is a black backpack. We don't need to get the detail back in there because that is not the focus. The focus is on his face, the front of his bag, his jacket, and, and these, um, these beautiful snow capped mountains here. So don't ever be fooled when people think you need, you can't crush the blacks, you can't crush the highlights. Do whatever you need to do to accentuate the person or the subject that you are using, that you're um, editing. So let's do our pop, editable splines, highlights, bring it up a tiny bit. Remember, we can't push things too far here. We don't want to push things too far here. Just a little bit. In our shadows. Just a tad on the shadows. Okay. Off. It's a very subtle one on this one because we don't need to do too much because it's already a beautiful shot. Sometimes people try and over edit things as well. I mean, if the footage already looks good, just do the little tweaks to give it that extra oomph. So let's bring our highlights all the way up and you can see that that's too much and we start to to lose, to um, crush the footage a bit too because we just don't have that range. So let's bring it here, we'll just bring it up a tiny bit to get, looking at his face, exposing for that nicely and some of this snow. Shadows, if we brought them up, see it's soft. We don't need to do all of that. Back down to where it was crushed a bit, I think it was fine. Our mid tones. I like this a little bit underexposed, to be honest. So let's bring it to about here. All right, that looks good. Let's so let's turn our exposure off and on. It's just brought back a bit of that exposure, and we'll add a vignette later. So primary. So let's have a look here. We've got dominant blues because of the jacket, the sky, um, and just the, we're shooting at um, dusk. So our reds are definitely not in there. So we look at our skin and our skin sitting too far on the red side. And this is one of the problems with using the LUT. Um, this does happen. So let's have a look here. I don't think we need to do too much of the coloring. We might, let's just add a bit more to the sky. Our shadow's probably a bit too much in there. We'll bring it back a tiny bit. There's actually not too much we want to do here. So we've just added a tiny bit more pinks back into the sky. Okay, so our skin. Let's see what we can do here. Again, we're working with 8-bit footage. So let's go to our color, our presets, six vector red. And let's qualify our skin. Okay, let's have a look here. Let's try and get our skin sitting 
good. Is these hats the same colour? It's good there. All right, blur radius up. Denoise, smooth all those artifacts out. Okay, now we can look here. Our skin is way too red and magenta. So let's have a first play around with our offset and see if we can bring it back down a bit. It's actually going to look all right, I think. Okay, let's just have a look here. Turn it off. Okay, so see how we've taken some of that real pinkish in his face? It's still a little bit green, I think, so let's just take some of that green out. Not too much. And add a tiny bit more saturation back in. All right, I think that's looking good. All right, so let's have a look here. It's pretty good. Okay, so what we can do now is let's add our vignette in because we want to focus on Matt, our hero. Just bring that here around Matt. Remember, we need to invert it. Come over here to our primaries and bring our midtones in a bit. All right, so let's have a look here. Now, if you take the vignette off, really brings the saturation back in here, but also brings the focus back on Matt. So it looks good. Now, we will notice we do have some noise in this footage and we can see some of the, the color noise here. So we will apply noise reduction and I recommend doing this last because it you need to put it first in your footage because you want to get rid of the noise on an unedited image because every time you start to add nodes and edit on top of an already noisy image, it's going to uh, exacerbate the issue. However, if you put the noise reduction first and then edit afterwards, it's editing on top of the cleaner image that the noise reduction's already worked on. Now Resolve does brilliant noise reduction, so we add it first here. Uh, but when you're editing, when playing it back, even on my computer, it's going to be choppy and slow. So you, when you edit it, add your noise reduction and then just turn it off. And then just before you export it uh, out of Resolve and just ready for YouTube or whatever, turn it back on and then it will export it as needed. So noise reduction, come down here to this one. Now, depending on your computer, I've got a pretty powerful computer and I like to get a nice clean image we'll go to two frames and we're going to go to better and let's just have a look at what's happening to our image here we don't want to go too far because it's going to be too soft but we'll bring it up to about here and we can already see that it's nice and okay and we're going to unlink this one and attack our chroma and you'll see that it's going to start to take a bit of that red digital noise that can happen in digital sensors. I'm going to do that to about, there's not too much here. Black magic's bad for it. So if we turn this on and off, it might be hard to see on YouTube compression, but it's cleaning that up a lot. And you have a look in our scopes here. See how much of the noise, digital noise, it's actually pulling out. And now what we can also do here, that's already softened the image a little bit. I would actually put a grain on here later, but we're not going to. In our sharpening, if your denoise is really heavy, you can add a bit more, bit of sharpening in here, um, which is this one. So if you're taking blur out, you're sharpening it, you could add about 0.48. But I think it's already over sharp anyway, the image of the Olympus cameras. So yeah. All right, so let's have a look. Let's turn all of these off and go from the start. So we have our log footage. We added our LUT. We added our pop. We fixed up our exposure. We adjusted our primaries. We fixed up our skin. We added our vignette. We added our noise reduction. And then we have our final image. All right guys, so that about wraps it up. I know that was again a really long one, but I think 
there doesn't seem to be many videos out there uh, on how to grade log the OM log footage and it can be very, very tricky. I think that six vector thing that I got from um, Jake was a really, really brilliant way of editing um, skin without making it fall apart. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll finish up here. If you do have any questions, which I'm sure you will, drop them in the comments below. I know there's a lot for a beginner to go over here, but by making those power grades and just doing it piece by piece, um, labeling everything and just doing it little by little, little tweaks, you should get great footage. If you have any questions, drop them below. And I have more videos planned like this, maybe going into actual color grading. Stay tuned for that one. And I'll see you very soon because there is another one coming. Catch up.